Survivor is a reality competition that puts strangers together on an island to compete in challenges and vote each other off until only one person remains. It's my favorite show and I'd love to play it someday, but the amount of time, people, coordination, and resources required to play it at home just isn't feasible for the average Joe. Luckily for us, there have been video games produced so everyone can experience Survivor. Four games have been made and uh, they're not good. But that streak might change with the brand new Survivor Castaway Island. So I think it's only fair to give some background to these games. These are Survivor. These aren't. You might be familiar with the name Kolanta, Francis Survivor. Well, one of the world's best kept secrets is that Kolanta loves making video games. Survivor Wii and DS are rebranded copies of Kolanta, these Nintendo 3DS games you've never heard about are Kolanta, and Survivor Castaway Island, as you can guess, is Kolanta. I have here the 2021 version of Kolanta for Nintendo Switch. It's available on Xbox and PlayStation, and re-released again in 2022 with minor updates like a honestly worse new art style and additional challenges. But at its core, the game is identical. Survivor Castaway Island is the 2022 version. That being said, is this a good Survivor video game? And shockingly, the answer is yes. Kinda. It's not a good video game, but it's easily the best Survivor video game. So let's talk about it. The game starts by letting you pick a tribe and one castaway to control. Whoever you choose will be your only life in the game. Get voted out, game over. There is no continues, restarts, Edge of Extinction, Redemple Temple. If you want to win the game, you get one shot. And in this game, castaways aren't blank slates. Each one has a random archetype that reacts differently to every situation that can happen, which makes every playthrough different from minute one. You may get a Kumbaya tribe you can coast to the end with, but you can also get Kasaya, where everybody hates each other, which already makes Castaway Island infinitely more replayable than the other Survivor video games. But things aren't as complex as they may seem. Your ability to interact in the game is still quite limited. Every in-game day follows the structure of a morning event, challenge, afternoon event, chore, evening event, and then tribal council if you lost an immunity challenge. What are the morning, afternoon, and evening events? Just about anything can happen, but you'll always have the opportunity to make a decision. For instance, in the classic Elizabeth Olsen David vs. Goliath scenario, your character's back hurts from sleeping on bamboo, so you can either complain about it, ask your tribe to help fix the shelter, or simply fix the shelter by yourself. This is a trick question. I pick option C, and then the game plays out a quick scenario that shifts the social dynamics within the tribe. In another scenario, our fire is put out. However, it appears somebody intentionally extinguished it. And I've been accused as the perpetrator. Two of my choices are to ask people to defend me, or I can point the blame on someone else. I choose to ask my friend for help but they don't believe me, thus jeopardizing my relationships with everyone. One more for you guys, right before Tribal Council, someone reveals who they're targeting. I can either ask them about it and make them speak more, or I can change the subject. This person is not in my alliance, so I pry for more information, and running their mouth makes everyone dislike them more. Bait Blake never fails. The interactivity and variety from these events is a welcome inclusion. Your decisions ultimately have an effect on the course of the game, and the options you get aren't always easy ones to make. Sometimes your hands are going to get dirty, and every choice is against your best interest. Sometimes your allies turn against you. That's why this is fun. Chores are busy. Every day you'll be able to explore the island to collect resources, improve your shelter, search for hidden immunity idols, and speak one-on-one -on -one with other players. And this is where Castaway Island becomes difficult. That meter in the corner is your stamina, and below it are your resources, water, food, and lumber. It is vital that you keep these numbers from reaching zero, because they literally keep you alive. Every morning you'll eat, drink, and throw a couple logs on the fire. You'll also 
lose stamina on a regular basis, sleeping poorly, competing in challenges, and gathering resources all make this number drop. And on top of that, the lower your stamina is, the worse you'll perform in challenges. And even more, if your stamina hits zero, you're getting medevaced out of the game. Keeping your health up is so important that strategy takes a backseat. Every playthrough, my biggest concern isn't getting to the final two. It's getting to the final two alive. Here's a pro tip, upgrade your shelter and storage as soon as possible. But with that comes a cost. A day spent working on the shelter or tending the fire could be a wasted opportunity to seize control of the game. While going out for firewood, you can speak with one, maybe two other players. This is your chance to build alliances, select the target to vote against, and learn how people feel about each other. You wouldn't believe this, but people are less resistant to work with you when they like you. So make your alliances early, because even if they hate you, they'll still be loyal to the day one agreement you sloppily put together. No, people can actually defect if you rub them the wrong way. There's a lot more depth than I ever expected, and juggling the strategy with your stamina and the randomness of camp life makes this game really engaging. Tribal Council isn't. This place gets to business, no vague discussions about how fast the game is moving or unnecessary metaphors. Survivor's like a video game, you think you've memorized the boss's attack patterns and are prepared to lay the final blow, and then they transform into a stronger monster and blast you with a laser beam you had no idea existed. Nah, <laughs> you show up, you vote, idols can be played, someone leads the game, Castaway Island figured out what the TV show couldn't. Challenges are the last big part of the game, and I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, these are pretty awful. The worst Mario Party minigames are better than these. This one is a Mario Party minigame. They're all too basic and bland, unpolished. I've never seen a video game camera be this bad. Challenges are divided into team and individual comps for the pre and post merge, but it's almost redundant since most of these are played alone. Your performance is the only thing that matters. It's weird coming back to camp and someone else takes credit for the win because where were you? I really don't have much to say about these. The challenges are either too easy you can't lose or impossible to win if your stamina is low. I'll also mention Castaway Island has multiplayer, but it's just to play the challenges without any other mode or incentive to try them out. Like unless you want to show someone how bad these games are, forget it even exists. And that's the basics to Survivor Castaway Island. Like I said, this is a great Survivor video game, an easy recommendation to diehard fans but to everyone else out there, you'll probably hate this. Castaway Island is the ideal video game adaptation for the show. It's digestible, quick, different every single time, and those are the most important elements you should have while being as accurate to the source material as possible. I think the survival aspect can occasionally be overbearing. Managing my stamina and resources became a little too stressful, yet I look online and scan through other people's playthroughs and they got full health by the end of the game, so uh... That makes me feel smart. Could Castaway Island be more interactive and complicated to make it even more accurate to the show? Of course, but since this is a licensed game for a very niche audience, it's not going to have the budget to go the extra mile. But with Kolanta investing in new video games pretty frequently, that Dream Survivor game could be closer than we think. If you liked this video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe. I've made videos about the Survivor games on Wii and Nintendo DS you can check out here or in the description. Or if the mention of Mario Party caught your interest, I've been reviewing every single game on my channel. Got nothing else for ya? Thanks for watching.